Hello everyone and welcome to Lower Aardvark Shares. Today's episode is going to address a question that I get quite a bit. So this question comes in a few different forms, but all of them refer to the same general idea. Some of the most popular forms of this question are which do you use, the graph editor or the motion editor? What is the difference between the graph editor and the motion editor? When is the graph editor better? When is the motion editor better? Uh, how should I use the graph editor versus the motion editor? And um, different questions like that. So I am going to put together this quick little video to demonstrate the differences between them and how you can use them together. So to quickly answer the first question, I predominantly use the graph editor to do all of my core animations, and then I use the motion editor to do detail animations. And I will quickly demonstrate both of those and the power that they have. So I have here just a really simple animation of Barney. As you can see, it is a total of five frames, and this is the animation. It's pretty straightforward. So a real power of the graph editor is the graph editor, in my opinion, has two major powers that make it a powerful tool. And the first one is its ability to arbitrarily change keyframes. So I can grab these and pull them out, like so, and make a slower animation on the fly. Similarly, I could grab the frames, and just control Z in here a bit, Grab the frames and bring them closer together, like so, and have the opposite effect where now the animation is faster. And if I wanted to, I could even be more precise and make some frames occur faster and others appear slower, like so. So that is the first major power that I feel the graph editor provides is the ability to arbitrarily move keyframes after they've been made. You could even move keyframes out of order if you so desired. Which is uh, useful under certain occasions. Uh, the second major power that it provides is the ability to easily duplicate cyclical animations, such as this really simple little happy dance maneuver. So I select all of these, and another thing it gives is spine control. I'll come back to this in a moment. You know, animation is duplicated seamlessly. So uh, as an aside, I will also bring up splines. So splines are these controls right here, and they control how animations are moved from frame to frame. So the um, splining method that I personally prefer and recommend is uh, cosine splining, which is also just called spline tangents. It uses a cosine curve, and it does a smooth interpolation across three points. So if I zoom in really close to any particular one here, you can see that there is a curve that goes smoothly. You can see how it kind of bends and dips, and it goes through and hits all of these points. And the cosine curve uses three points, because you got a cosine curve that goes across these three, and these three, and these three. So that's the preferred spline for myself, and it's the one I recommend. But you do have other splines. You also have linear tangents, which just draw literal straight lines and looks a bit jerky like this. So if you want a more stop motion look, you can use those. Uh, there are also flat tangents. I'm not exactly certain the details of how flat tangent works, but if you look, it's also a curve, but it's a curve between two points and it also looks a bit jerky, which could also give you stop motion. And then there is also finally step tangents, which uh, do absolutely no interpolation between them and literally just jumps from frame to frame, which gives you that uh, blocked motion look if that's what you're looking for. So this is a little aside, those are splines. Okay, so now motion editor. 
So what I use Motion Editor for, as I said before, is detail animation, and that looks like this. Or we can just go here, and we can tween in between, and on top of our cyclical animation, we can grab other parts and rotate them. And you see I'm not going in adherence to the keyframes I place. They're completely arbitrarily placed. And of course, I don't have to do just the head. I can do the spine. You know, this is all just really trivial animation that I'm doing. And then we'll even do one that's even really bizarre, really obvious. And yet through it all, we still have that cyclical animation. And in fact, if I were to go back and take a look at the keyframes, you would see that they actually changed the keyframes. And so that is how I personally use the motion editor and the graph editor. I believe the graph editor's biggest strengths are the ability to arbitrarily change and move and spline keyframes as you wish. And I believe that the motion editor's power is that it can apply animations over top the graph editor, which is how I do my detail animations for things like the head moving and such. Yeah, usually to give expression fitting the voice and such is the most common use, but also in things like this, or obviously not as pronounced, but you have just subtle head and body motions. You know, there's nothing subtle about this particular animation, but you get the point. So I hope that answers the question of motion editor versus graph editor. What does what best and when do I personally recommend using each under what cases? Until next time, this has been Lord Artifact Shares.